We gotta find a way to slow him down. We gotta continue to try to find an answer. The Suns' flight is simple. Win now at home and avoid being caught in an L.A. stronghold. We know what our strength is, and we know how to place it at. Let's get the ball in the paint. The Lakers' big men have single-handedly manipulated the opposing defense, leaving the Suns equally stunned. Maybe we'll decide that we'll let Kobe get 80 and try to guard the other guy. Tonight, Steve Nash carries the burden of team leadership and the eternal hope of a city yearning for its first NBA title. We still think we got a lot more in the tank to give, and we're going to need it if we're going to get a win in the next game. A win for Phoenix will promptly silence doubters, echoing memories of playoffs past. A loss could send the Suns into a mode of desperation and panic. For the Lakers, their championship quest remains intact and on target. Lakers Suns next. A beautiful 75 degree day in the Valley of the Sun, hot and humid throughout the week. And fans here in Phoenix would like to see a sizzling hot performance by their sons, reminiscent of what they demonstrated through the regular season and the first two rounds of the playoffs. TNT's postseason coverage continues with the defending champion Los Angeles Lakers facing the Phoenix Suns. Game three of the Western Conference Final Series. The Lakers winning the first two games in LA. Hi everybody, I'm Marv Alvin along with Doug Collins, the new head coach of the Philadelphia 76ers will have more on that as tonight's game progresses right here. Let's check out the Taco Bell starting lineups. For the Lakers, Paul Gasol has had a magnificent postseason. Kobe Bryant, spectacular despite the sore knee. And Doug, as you mentioned on the pregame, Derek Fisher has played Steve Nash effectively with his physical presence. The Suns need much more off the boards from Amari Stoudemire, just nine rebounds in two games, but Grant Hill and Jason Richardson played well in game two, and Alvin Gentry is still looking for more shots from that man, Steve Nash. Now, including the regular season, the Suns had dropped five of six games to the Lakers, and now they are faced with having to beat them in four of five games to reach the NBA Finals, obviously a very difficult task. Time right here for Cold Hard Facts, presented by Coors Light, as we check out your keys for tonight. Well, Barb, the Suns need a good first quarter, but a good defensive first quarter. They're giving up an average of almost 36 points in both of those games. They've dug themselves a hole, minus 9 in Game 1, minus 12 in Game 2. They need a good first quarter, that three-point line because of the Laker advantage in the paint. They went and win that by double digits. The bench spark at home, the Laker bench has been better uh, in L.A. You would expect the Suns to play better here at home. Channing Fry, one of 13, they need him, and the stars must shine. In L.A., it was Kobe Bryant, Pal Gasol. Tonight, it needs to be Steve Nash and Amari Stoudemire. Suns control the opening tip. Lopez, yes. Robin Lopez, second-year player from Stanford, gets it going. The officials, Monty McCutcheon, NF Rush, Tom Washington. Ryan played by Hill here at the start. Fisher with the pass through the hands of Bynum. Andrew Bynum still trying to get his self together. He usually gets off to very good starts in the first half and then really struggles in the second half to get himself warmed up after sitting a long time with that knee. Stoudemire. He'll head to the line, and Alvin Gentry telling us that he has to have a much more active Amari Stoudemire. And I think, Mark, for his psyche here at home, I mean, he's been all the talk of talk show radio about Amari Stoudemire has got to play better. You see his numbers, the rebounding. That's what makes Charles Barkley crazy right there when he sees less than seven rebounds a night. But Amari needs off to get off to a good start here tonight to keep these fans behind him. He played so well in the second half of the season, actually well in the first two playoff rounds. He has not been himself here against the Lakers. Foul was on Gasol. Yes, Amari turning things around following the trade deadline when things obviously settled down in his head. Gasol was taken off stride. Suns were looking for a travel on that hop step move. 
And it was last touch by Phoenix. Interesting matchup. That's a tough matchup for Robin Lopez to have to play Pal Gasol, who has the ability, as we saw, to put that ball on the floor and free it off the dribble. Fisher for three. Yes. It's amazing. He is a much better player on the road than he is at home. I think all that championship experience, that poise, he has a real cool level head on the road that the Lakers need. Nice pass inside, but Stoudemire cannot finish off the lead from Nash. Our test has shot well over the first two games. Bidem had a good shooting performance in game two. Bryant now played by Richardson. Shot clock down to six. We'll be finding the open gun on our chest, not able to hit from three. Bryant with the rebound and scores. Well, the Suns can't allow that to happen. They cannot force a tough shot and then allow Kobe Bryant to rebound the ball and get a second chance opportunity. Here's Stoudemire to try to get him involved early and he'll head back to the line. See, I like what Amari has done there. He slipped the screen and what I mean by that, he really doesn't set the screen. As soon as Steve starts to go, he moves quickly and the rotation has been slow there. The first time he beat Gasol on the drive, got to the foul line. That time, the rotation slow to get over. It's a very positive sign here, him getting to the free throw line early in this game. The foul is committed by Bynum. Game one, Amari did have 23 points and a blowout, but only three rebounds. Game two, seven of 14, 18 points, but only six rebounds. And he's got to do a better job on the boards. I mean, when you look at it, I mean, in the first two series, Marv, actually, Jason Richardson and Grant Hill really were their leading rebounders. Those wing players got back and did a nice job. But in a game like this, when you have this size of the Lakers, you've got to have Amari Stoudemire getting double-digit rebounds. Hey, the saw with the jump hook over Lopez. That's in rhythm. That's way too deep. Lopez has got to do his work early. You heard the studio talking about, I think it was Kenny Smith. You've got to meet him sooner and not let him walk into the rhythm of the play. Watch as Gasol just sort of comes across in that triangle offense. If he catches the ball that deep, it's going to be a long night for the Suns. Test looking to front Richardson. Richardson has shot well over the first two. Stoudemire with the pick for Nash. Here's Nash. And it's put down by Lopez. Robin Lopez has played very well for a guy who had been out since late March with a bulging disc in his back, missing 20 games, the last 20 games of the regular season. He's done a good job beyond expectation for the Sun. The Sun showing the outside touch. Is there a more skilled big man in the game, Marv? I mean, he can get you in the post. You just saw the jump shot, the way he runs the floor. He can pass out of a double team. Nice pass, out of line. Yes, yes, the basket points. The foul committed by Bynum. Great execution by the Suns and Amari Stoudemire. Once again, you see him slip that screen, and Bynum has got to rotate and get over there sooner. That's twice Bynum now has been slow in the rotation. Actually, with Bynum leaving the game now and uh, Lamar Odom coming in, Lamar Odom and Gasol really, I think, are a better defensive matchup against the Suns. And when Bynum is on the floor, Marv, it's tough for him to have the mobility to get out on those screens and rotate the way that you have to do against uh, against Phoenix. And Lamar Odom has been a difference maker in this series. Three-point play for Stoudemire. Game one, 19 points, 19 rebounds for Odom, which Amari Stoudemire called a lucky game, and that certainly backfired in game two. Odom coming out strong in the fourth quarter, finished with 17 and 11. Kobe Bryant. So Kobe has come out firing, and the Lakers up by one. Richardson for three. Rebounded by Gasol. Now Bryant met by Hill. Slapped away by Hill. He stripped Bryant. Three on one. Eight Stoudemire to the rim again. Fouled by Odom. That's when the Suns are at their best, getting out and running. Alvin Gentry told us more before the game. He said, my big men have to run. Our advantage is speed. And so what happens, you create a turnover, and now you get a chance to get out and run. Jason Richardson actually should have given this ball to Grand Hill, widened the lane, and Amari would have probably got a dunk on this play. As it is, he will go to the free throw line. And uh, once again, very active, Marv. These are already his, what, sixth and seventh free throws here of the first period. Now Stoudemire was on the far side on the right 
wing with Hill straight down the middle. Amari's now four of six at the line. The game is tied at 11. You look back at NBA history, no team has come back from a 3-0 deficit, which has occurred in 93 previous best of seven. Bryant gets inside off the fake. And only 14 teams have come back when they've trailed two games to nothing. Stoudemire. We are seeing a different Amari Stoudemire here in the early portion of the first quarter. I think he got the uh, aggression memo. Yeah. They clear it out for Gasol. Game is tied at 13, four minutes. John Bottom. Foul is called, Nash is hit on the arm. Foul committed by Fisher. Well, Amari Stoudemire with very, very good deep post position, only one dribble away from the basket. I like the fact that he turned and faced. He got his shoulders past Lamar Odom and got the easy basket. So Stoudemire already has two of three from the floor, five of seven. And how important it is to get to that free throw line, especially the Phoenix Suns, a very good free throw shooting team. So you want to get there early and often, Marv. And the Lakers over the limit very early. You can just see the dominance there, Marv. I mean, 111 to 65. Look at the shot attempts, 73 to 45. Steve Nash only averaging nine shot attempts. And then that fourth quarter scoring, it's been Pal Gasol in game two with the 14. Kobe Bryant was brilliant in game one. And and if this game is close tonight, Steve Nash and Amari Stoudemire are their fourth quarter guys. Nash with just 10 shots in game one and only the eight in game two. The foul is away from the ball. It's a non-shooting foul for the Suns, only their first team foul. It's, it's on Richardson. And Alvin Gentry, after the, the first game, said Steve Nash has to get more shots. Well, he did not. He got two less. Today, when we spoke to Alvin, he said there's no way he's going to get many more shots the way the Lakers are playing. Yeah, the personnel is here to not let him come off those screens and shoot the ball. They're going to force him to give the ball up. So he has to be a facilitator, and guys have to knock down shots. Yes, we are in the desert. Welcome back to the Valley of the Sun with the Suns leading the Lakers by two. Time for Gatorade around the cooler. Here's Craig Sager. Craig. Well, thanks, Marv. Doug has been comparing the Lakers' defense on Steve Nash to a football team containing the running back. Derek Fisher says it's their number one priority. He says it begins with him meeting the initial penetration, but he says he's getting great help from Odom, Console, and Bynum, not only verbally communicating the screen, but also stepping up to cut off Nash's driving lanes. It's an effective game plan that Nash admits is working. Um, and they're usually putting a third guy in the area to, to make the ball go to someone else. And right now it's going to guys on the weak side who are making shots. So we're still scoring, I think, uh, like I said. But, you know, we'll always look for ways to improve it. But it's really the defense that we got to improve. After a very strong regular season and superb play first two rounds of the playoffs, to this point, Steve Nash has been contained. Well, Lamar Odom with his first bucket. He's been fantastic, Mark. 15 points a game in the paint. That, that's how effective he's been getting that ball in the lane. Lopez tried to adjust, and the rebound is ripped down by Gasol. Marv Albert, Doug Collins, Craig Sager. We're at U.S. Airways Center in Phoenix. Got clock down to seven. Fisher open for three. Stoudemire able to take it out of the hands of our test. Hill with the pull-up. Rebounded by Bryant. Now the Lakers are going to run selectively, Barb. They'll run more at home here. Kobe Bryant talked about controlling the pace, not running up and down and getting in a three-point shooting contest. Fisher, that's a two-pointer. Lakers have opened up eight of 12 from the field. Now, how, how many big shots through his career have we seen Derek Fisher hit? And most of them have been on the road. How do you explain that? He's just tough. He is tough. You know, I, I know I'm at a, I, I, I love his game, and here is Jason Richardson, but what 
Derek Fisher brings to this team in terms of poise and his energy. And, and guys know that they can count on him, Marv. He's one of those guys that can miss every shot during the course of the game and won't run away from a big shot late if it presents itself. Lakers and Suns tied at 17 as we hit the halfway mark on this first quarter. And again, the whistle away from the ball, fouled against the Suns, only their second team foul. Foul on Stoudemire, that is his first. And now Channing Fry will come on for Robin Lopez. And Channing Fry, overall, in first two games, just one for 13 from the field. Even though the regular season did not shoot the ball well, particularly from three-point range, in three games against the Lakers. The song was right at front. See, that is demoralizing, because now Channing Fry is going to want to try to get it back on the other end. And I, I would, if I were him, go inside and try to get an easy one rather than shoot a long jump shot. How about Steve Nash? I mean, over the outstretched arm of Lamar Odom, that was an incredible degree of difficulty shot that he just made. Steve showing us the rainbow. Game tied at 19. Odom gets the step. Rebounded by Stoudemire. Got a very strong first quarter for Stoudemire. Richardson not able to convert on the lob. Fisher all the way. And it's contested by Stoudemire. Nash's pass. Well, it's recovered. Richardson open for three. Yes. That's when he's at his best. Leaking out on the fast break. The Suns got a break on that play. That ball was deflected, and Nash was able to swat it over to Jason Richardson for the open three. Yellows on Bryant. Bryant fires for three. Kobe Bryant right back, and the game is tied. Bryant has hit all four of his shot attempts. Nash. Yes. Steve Nash finding some room here in the early going. Well, that was a great screen by Jason Richardson. If you saw right at the end there, Pau Gasol came running over to try to get his hand in, in uh, Steve Nash's face just a little bit too late. Our chest up by Nash on a switch. Fisher for three. Rebounded by Richardson. Richardson from the other side. Yes. Another three for Jason Richardson. Well, it's because of the defense, Mark. They're getting some defensive stops. Now when they run out, they're getting in a broken court. It's tougher to match up. Fisher. Well, Derek Fisher firing up shots. He's had the touch in this first quarter after two quiet games at the offensive end, although he's done a, an excellent job defensively on Nash. Stoudemire looks to set the pick. Fry for three. Hesitated. He had the shot, and he looked like he was going to pass the ball. He just got to catch it and shoot it. You know, he's. we were talking at breakfast, Marv. He was saying, you know, everything feels good. It's right on and this, that, whatever, and it's not good. It's almost he's either hesitating or he's got happy feet. And you got to have, a, you know, amnesia when you're a shooter. you got to forget about those shots you missed. He had the shot. It was open. He hesitated, and when you do that, you lose. You think at this point he's tight? I think he's thinking about it, yes, no question. Jared Dudley has checked in. He's now defending on Bryant. Bryant shoots over. Make it five for five for Kobe Bryant. Stoudemire met by Gasol with help. Stoudemire rejected. Dudley had an opportunity. Dudley staying. On Bryant with help from Richardson. Our test fires one up. Not a good shot. I think it would be better off to take that open three when he dribbled the ball. He never got on balance. Nice move by Nash. He beat Fisher off the dribble but could not finish. And, and again, Ron Artest coming over to get a hand in the face for Steve Nash to shoot that ball quickly. Steve Nash talked to Craig Sager about that third defender who's always coming. Ryan packs his way, went with the left hand. Odom try to keep it alive and deflected out last touch by Stoudemire. Lakers will talk it over. Timeout, Suns up by one.
It's that great screen I was talking about a while ago. Look at how he stood up Derek Fisher. Gasol comes over just a little bit too late. It's that third defender. They're running a big guy over to try to chase him off the shot. You see Gasol coming just a little too late. And Nash delivers. Back in Phoenix in what has been a high-flying first quarter. Both clubs shooting well. Phoenix up by one. And uh, it has been an offensive showcase for both teams. Phoenix obviously giving up too many points, but the, as the Lakers have scored 128 and 124, 58% shooting in both games for the Lakers. A lot of similarities between games one and two, which is uh, not a good thing for the Phoenix Zone. Well, if you look here early in the first quarter, the Lakers are already shooting 57%. Now, early in the game, it's... Uh, Kobe Bryant and Derek Fisher, they've combined for 8 of 12, so they have 18 of the 26 points. So the Suns have their tempo. They have nine fast break points. They've got to the line nine times. The Lakers none, and they only lead by one. So the Lakers finding a way to hang around here, even though the Suns have gotten off to a very good start. Shannon Brown has come on for the Lakers. Andrew Barbosa for the Suns. Kobe Bryant continues the spectacular shooting, 6 of 7 from the field, 13 points. I think Kobe's feeling so much better after he had problems with that knee. The Oklahoma City Series, he had it drained. He has been brilliant ever since. Sat out practice the last two days. Uh, was out here very early shooting at the arena. Barbosa gives it back. One on the shot clock, five. Rebounded by Fisher. That's the last thing you want to do when you're shooting poorly, have to throw up a shot to beat the shot clock. I mean, it just adds insult to injury, Mark. Although from Fry's point of view, it might have been kind of a loosey-goosey yeah, shot. Yeah, just let her go. Dudley with the steal. Here's Barbosa, Nash to the right. They exchange, Barbosa is blocked. He thought he was fouled. Brown got a piece of it. Adam Brown, who played well the first two games of the series. Phil Jackson telling us he will go deeper into his bench tonight as Bryant is able to drill him again. Talk about Kobe having the pulse speed of the game, recognizing he needs to have a good first quarter. He has been spectacular. Final minute of the first. He's got a post guy. He just got to turn and shoot over the top of uh, Derek Fisher. He rushed it, uh, Mar. Now 0 for 3 here to start this game. Fry had that mismatch. Bryant for three. Nash pops it down. Odom back. Here's Dudley. Fouled by Odom. A nice play by Dudley. Not a great leaper. And he saw that Lamar Odom had the angle on him. And so what he did, he veered over, got his body onto Odom, and created the foul. This is going to be the 10th and 11th free throw attempts of the Phoenix Suns in the first quarter. So they've been very aggressive getting to that line. Yes, the Lakers have been over the limit for some time. Jared Dudley will shoot two. Check out TNT Overtime Live. You can do it now on NBA.com. And watch exclusive player follow cameras of Suns and Lakers TNT Overtime only on NBA.com. Jared Dudley in game one was in immediate foul trouble facing uh, Kobe. And game two, he bounced back. Five of six from the field. All five shots. In fact, five of five from beyond that three-point line, 15 points, five rebounds, and he fouled out. And he was a real catalyst in that third quarter when the Suns came back. Look for Kobe here to go for a quick two for one. The Saul is hit. Robinson, who had just checked in, came over with Fry. And the foul is on Robinson. Mark, we talk about defense. You know, the first two games, obviously, eight quarters played in those two games. The Lakers had had five. 30 point quarters and 129 already here tonight. So that's going to be six of nine. That's like Gasol with a powerful finish. Beautiful setup by Bryant, who collects assist number four. He had a playoff career high 13 in game two in LA, and the Lakers have a three point edge as time is running down in this first quarter. But most of off the cut. Here comes Brown, fires it up from midcourt. The Lakers with a 32-29 lead after one. You see the stat line on Kobe Bryant. The Lakers, 58 
point percent shooting once again, while the Suns just nine for 23. The entire repertoire being shown here by Kobe Bryant. Welcome back to Phoenix, where right now it's 32 to 29 after one period. I'm with Bill Jackson, and Coach, you've been able to outscore Phoenix in the first two games of the series, but is this a dangerous pace for you guys? You know, I didn't recognize you right away. I thought you were the good humor ice cream man at first standing over here on the sideline. That's at halftime. Oh, really? Okay. Anyway, first quarter, high adrenaline. You showed, they showed what they could do in that first quarter. Great attack team, shooting the ball really well. Colby, 15 points, four assists. Has the extra day's rest really helped this game? Oh, no doubt about that. I mean, it's given him a lot of life in his legs, but more than that, it's how they're playing him. You know, they're giving him that stuff. They're not helping too much off him. He's taking what they're giving him. Well, thanks a lot. Thank you, Mark. Doug, who is writing Phil's material these days? <laughs> He just sees Sager and it <laughs> he, just comes to his mind. He can't help himself. Can't help himself. Second quarter underway. Andrew Bynum back on the floor. That counts on the foul. So Bynum, who left after picking up two fouls, makes his return and a potential three-point play. Well, it's going to be very interesting here because now Phil Jackson has Bynum out on the floor with Artest and Odom for a very potent front line and he's got the two young guards oh no nobody box out Channing or excuse me Shannon Brown Leandro Barbosa goes to sleep and he goes right down the lane and tip dunks the ball but I'm going to talk about the bench here of the Phoenix Suns they have got to make a contribution and it's going to be an offensive foul Goran Dragic who had just checked in along with Jordan Farmer got involved and Dragic called for the push and as yes. Brown with the finish Right at the end of the season, people around the NBA were talking about the fact that the Phoenix Suns had dramatically improved at the defensive end. And you could see it from the numbers over the first two rounds of the playoffs, but they are being torn apart by the Lakers at the defensive end. Yeah, Mark, their personnel is so tough to defend. They can attack you in so many different ways. And now, all of a sudden, this bench, Farmar, Shannon Brown, and Lamar Odom are playing terrific basketball. Robinson able to go glass over Odom. The last possession, the Phoenix Suns went to zone. Let's see if they go back again. They showed some the other night. The Lakers scored the first three times they saw it. The Suns immediately got out of it, but here they are back in their zone once again. Kobe Bryant sitting down. Bill Jackson has a backcourt of Shannon Brown and Jordan Farmar. Bynum, Odom, Artest on the front line. Here's Farmar. He's been shooting the ball well. Rebounded by Dudley. Dragic going at Brown. The ball slapped away. Our test coming up with it. He has got quick, strong hands. Reminds me of Sharunas Marshallonis, who used oh. to play for the Golden State Warriors. I thought he had the quickest, strongest hands in the NBA. Our test surrounded in a bad pass. Tennis for Odom. Dudley comes out of the pack. Three on two. Good recovery here by the Lakers. Fly for three. He cannot find them. Foul is called on our test. That's why Fry has either got to get to the free throw line or he's got to get a layup. The first four games of the Portland series in round one, he struggled dramatically. In game five, his first four field goals were in the paint, either a couple layups or a dunk. Then he stepped out and got his three-point shot going. It's like being a home run hitter and you've struck out four times and you're still swinging for the fences. Dragic is off. The Suns in the midst of a drought. Fry is now one of 17 overall. Phoenix won for its last 10. So the Lakers have a five point lead. Started to say earlier, Phil Jackson telling us that he was going to play the bench more minutes tonight because of the, the pattern of the series now every other day. And he's looking to rest people. Might go deeper into the roster. Our test. Rebounded by Fry. Well, that's why Kobe played 43 minutes the other night because Phil knew they didn't play again for almost four nights. So you could get Kobe all that rest. And more, more importantly, the Lakers have been home for 12 straight days. So they've been in their training facility. They've been resting. You've got your team doctors, treatment. You've got everything there at home. Guys go home. They're very comfortable. On the flip side of that, the Phoenix Suns 
This is the first home game they've played in 18 days. They've won 12 of the last 13 here at home. Fallmar on that foul. Second team foul committed by the Lakers. Defensive three is called on Odom, so a technical foul awarded the Suns. Now, like this, Channing Fry has got a chance now to go to the line and see the ball go in the basket. This, I, I know I'm not trying to trivialize this, but this is an important free throw for him to step up and see this ball go in. 81% during the regular season. And we talked about this earlier, the fact that even if a guy is an outside shooter, if he hits a layup or something in close, it helps the touch from deeper. Reggie Miller was the best of that. He'd run for a layup early in the game or get to the foul line. Whoa! <laughs> Gorm Drogic with an acrobatic move and the foul. You better have some strength to be able to finish this. That's a big man. Andrew Bynum coming down on top of you. How about the English on this ball? He creates the contact, the spin off the glass. And, you know, Mark, so much has been made about the Laker bench playing well, and they have. But I think it's been lost that the Phoenix Suns bench has come in and done and played well. They've been behind when they've come in. A lot of times they have caught up. It's their starters who have dug them holes in the first quarter that they have tried to play out of. Three-point play for Dragic. You saw Bynum leave as he picked up a third foul. Gasol back on the floor. Shot clock to six. Brown for three. Fry with the rebound. The zone has bothered this group. They put him on the perimeter, forced him to shoot jump shots. Nice change in defense. For early second, game three of the Western Conference Finals. The Suns trying to get back into the series. Fry. Rebounded by Gasol. Farmer in the open court. Suns able to get back. Laker lead is now one. Gasol off the fence. His footwork is so good. Now four of six. Eight points. Lakers continue to shoot 58%. Here's Dudley running out on a three. Well, the Suns have been shooting. They're fortunate to be trailing by only three points. Well, they've done a good job here defensively, finally getting the Lakers slowed down a little bit. This zone has uh, knocked them out of the rhythm. Another turnover here by the Lakers as Dudley picks off the pass. Dudley with that high dribble, floats it to uh, Dragic, who pops the three. Back tap, played by Fry. <laughs> Odom with the rebound. Shanning Fry is now... 0 oh for 6. That makes him 1 for 19 for yes, the series. Now that uh, yeah. it's really piling on him quickly. Just Brown with the runner. Rebounded by Amundsen. Alvin Gentry keeping Fry on the floor, hoping for one shot that goes down with the thought that will lead to many others. And Marv, you made the point the other day. I mean, the Suns have five bench players on the floor at the same time. Not many coaches will do that. They'll have maybe two or three. This Fry again misfires. Robinson sends it out. Run down by Brown. Brown spinning his way. Finding the open Farmar from downtown. Boy, Farmar has found a touch in this series. He has played well the other night. He came in off the bench. Four of five, 11 points. He was three of three from three and Mark remember that game was tied 90 all at the end of three Farmer came in he hit a three to start the fourth quarter pushed it out to a 6-0 run the Suns never recovered Shannon Brown you cannot have these kind of lapses Leandro Barbosa's got to get a body on him Kobe's resting and the Lakers are in command Lakers by six here in Phoenix Doug as you know this past Friday I had the the pleasure of doing a sit-down interview with a very knowledgeable NBA fan by the name of President Barack Obama. The president made the statement last week that he did not want to be accused of tampering, but LeBron James would look very nice, he said, in the uniform of his favorite team, the Chicago Bulls, which led to this question. 
Could you, on behalf of the Bulls, throw in perhaps a night in the Lincoln bedroom or <laughs> ride on Air Force One? You know, like I said, I don't want to meddle. I will say this. Rose, Noah, you, you've got it's a pretty good crew. It's, it's a, a pretty good yeah, core. Yeah. Uh, you know, you can see LeBron fitting in pretty well. Doug, we had our conversation on the president's basketball court at the White House. We'll have the entire interview right here on TNT. Uh, the pregame show Tuesday night at 8 p.m. Eastern Time, 5 Pacific, prior to game four, and we'll be seen again after the game on inside the NBA. Now, wait a second, can the president be fined by NBA commissioner? I was wondering David that. Stern? He got Steve Kerr and yeah. uh, Mark Cuban. Maybe he can get uh, the president. Back come the Lakers off the block by Odom. Odom spinning his way, rebounded by Stoudemire. So Amari Stoudemire back on the floor, along with Robin Lopez. Dragic working off the pick and draws the foul on Gasol. That's his second personal. Let's take a look at the upcoming national TV schedule ESPN tomorrow, 7.30 Eastern time. Eastern Conference Finals game four with the Magic trying to stay alive. They play up in Boston. And we will have game four of the Western Conference Final on Tuesday night, 8 o'clock start between the Lakers and the Suns. How do you explain what is going on about Boston Orlando series? Well, I think what you're seeing is that Boston has the ability to really be physical with Dwight Howard, and they've taken away his post game and the two uh, really tough losses they had. He did have the very good game in game two, but they have rendered uh, Richard Lewis totally ineffective. They've taken him out, and that's what you do. You take away a key piece of a team, and then they struggle to score, and they live and die so much with those three-point shots. They're just not getting the clean looks that they've gotten during the season. Sun spending much time at the line. That's keeping them close, down by four. Lakers yet to go to the line in this first half. Odom, call for the travel. You see that zone defense once again has really bothered the Lakers. Now, Gasol is a very good passer, and he found Odom, but the size of Lopez, that's why you need big guys in the paint. He forced the traveling violation on Odom. The Lakers lead by four. It's amazing. The Suns are really struggling to shoot the basketball, but they're hanging in here because they're finally getting some defense. They got too many inside stuff. They're taking the ball at us. We can live with all the jump shot. We got to get them out of the paint. You know, challenge jump shot with Jacoby. That's what, hey, if he makes them, he makes them, okay? We can't do anything about that as long as they're challenged. Ball goes up there. Got to have all five guys rebounding it, okay? Well, just to follow up on Alvin, Mark, the, the Lakers are averaging 54 points a game in the paint in the first two games. They have 16, so that's why he was talking about living with the jump shots. The problem for the Phoenix Suns, they're living with jump shots right now, and it's amazing they're only down four. Their bench, two for 16, 0 of 8 from three. So that zone defense has really worked to help keep them in the game. They've kept the Lakers off balance and out of that paint. A big difference at the uh, free throw strike. Steve Nash, who just checked back in. That's his third field goal, three of five. Eight points, and it's a two-point Laker lead. Ashes back as is Richardson at Hill. Odom slashing his way. Hey. Saw the opening. Bryant with the rebound and scores. What Odom does, though, he'll drive in. And what happens is you come over to contest that. And when you do, you will open up offensive rebounding opportunities. When you play zone, it's tough to block out because you don't have man responsibilities. Bryant, 8 of 10 now, 17 points. Stoudemire way off. Hit by Nash. Ryan. Yes. He's in a great rhythm right now. This is one of those games where you heard Phil Jackson talk about he knows he's got single coverage. So he if he can get in rhythm, he's going to get any good shot that he wants. Taking out the look of what he did in game one of this series. Stoudemire had it slapped away. Saved. But Stoudemire's right there. Odom saving it into the Phoenix front court and Stoudemire able to take advantage. Now that's one of the cardinal rules. Unless you can save that ball and throw it to the other end or your own teammate, you're better off letting it go out of bounds and getting your defense set. 11 points, five rebounds for Stoudemire. Odom is off. Rebound Hill. 
We're coming up on four minutes to play in the first half. I'm here, I'm out. Hill not looking for the shot. Fox Lopez, beautiful pass from Hill. Lopez uncovered. The Suns move with him too. Well, no communication there. Great ball movement. You see Nash when he can probe behind that basket and kick that ball out. You play inside out, and then a nice pass by Grant Hill. Lopez knocked it away. Got blocked down to four. Bryant with a deep three, rebounded by Hill. Stoudemire for Nash. And these are things we did not see in games one and two. That's that great pocket pass. He does it with his left hand, I think, actually better than his right. That is an incredible degree of difficulty pass. But Steve Nash is not afraid to throw it. The game tied at 45. Picked off by Hill. Richardson chased by Fisher. He thought he was fouled. The saw. The foul is called. The question is, will the basket count? No, it's ruled. It is a foul before the shot attempt by Hill. Look at this pocket pass between two defenders. The long arm of Lamar Odom can't get it. Amari Stoudemire gets the easy one. Look at that pass by Steve Nash. Very little room to get through there. And this zone has been very effective for the Suns. Coming up on 6.30 on a beautiful day in Phoenix, Arizona. And Doug, time for Total Defense 5 presented by right guard as we check out. First two rounds of the playoffs talking about the food Suns defense at least for a while over those first two rounds but a different story to this point in the Western Conference Finals. Well Alvin uh, Gentry has said anytime they try to take something away for the Lakers they've had an answer. It'll be a technical foul here. Bill Jackson got a technical Bill with a little bit of that uh, smile as he sits down. About personnel and the size of the Lakers if you double in the post you know, then you free up some shooting. The Lakers have shot it well from three the first two games. If you help on Kobe, he finds the open man. He gets 13 assists. If you don't, he gets 40. And here's Phil Jackson here. This is when he gets the tech. I'm not sure what he says to Monty McCutcheon, but whatever it was, uh, he gets a T, and uh, Steve Nash walks down and knocks in the free throw. Whatever it was, it was not appreciated. <laughs> exactly. Like Monty says, <laughs> that's enough. So the Suns back on top by a point. Just under three left in this first half. Odom. Richardson. Nice move on Fisher. Oh, Spottemeyer missed on the tip as he came flying in. Our chest for three way off. And our test has shot the ball well over the first two games. That was last touch by Stoudemire. Well, you talk about what a difference a day makes. Our test and Odom have been so good tonight. They're a combined one of 11. Our test missing on his first four. Nice pass from Brock. These are the only two guys who are shooting a high percentage. Gasol, 6 of 8, Kobe, 9 of 12. So they are 15 for 20. Assist number 5 for Bryant. Lakers have a one-point lead. Marv Albert, Doug Collins, Craig Sager from Phoenix. Nice set up. Lopez from Nash. Steve Nash with his seventh assist. And they've done a great job of taking care of the ball, too, tonight, Marv. Only three turnovers. That's led to three Laker points. I thought the turnovers really hurt the Suns in the Staples Center in the first two games. Suns up by a point. Offensive foul as Nash took the hit. So the ball back to Phoenix. Bryant called for his first foul. Just under a minute and a half to play in the first half. Nash off balance. 
giving the Suns a three-point lead. Now we've seen him get his shoulder square twice. He got one dropped off to Lopez for layup that time. He sort of gives Fisher a little bump to step back, and the Suns staying in that zone until the Lakers figure it out. Oh, oh. is fouled by Lopez. Robin Lopez, who came on so well in this is second NBA season, as you see the elbow come up. And Whoa. connects with uh, Steve Nash. Wow, right in the jaw. We saw him take that uh, shot in the eye against San Antonio. Played the fourth quarter of game four with it compl completely swollen. You still see it's uh, black and blue under that right eye. Lamar Odom at the line. This is only the third trip to the free throw line for the Lakers. Getting back to uh, Robin Lopez at the start of the year, sat out after breaking his left foot. Following surgery, came back, played well, then he was sidelined by that bulging disc in his back, had not played since late March. Artest able to hustle down the rebound. Bryant over Richardson. And Amari Stoudemire's been a different guy off the boards here in this first half. Hill. And he will head to the line. Isn't it amazing when you get defensive stops how much better your offense looks? Mark, we talked about it in our pregame. When the Lakers have gotten their defense back, they've really just clogged the lane, giving the Suns no opportunities. Tonight, the Suns have 11 fast break points. It's also triggering them getting to the free throw line. This will be their 17th and 18th free throws. They have a very good rhythm in this game tonight because they're getting stops and running. Foul on Odom, his third. Phoenix in a 12 2 spurt. Now, Josh Powell will come on for the Lakers, replacing Lamar Odom. How about Grant Hill in, in game two? He was in foul trouble in game one, had his hands full with Kobe Bryant. Game two helped bring the Suns back 14 of his 23 points in the third quarter. 10 of 17 overall for Hill. He's given Phoenix a five point lead. See, the thing that's helping right now is no one's having to spend a lot of energy trying to chase Kobe Bryant on the defensive end because of this zone that is sort of passing him off. Shot clock to five. Good job defensively. Bryant battling for it. Can't control. Very good defensive possession by the Suns. Here's Nash moving it down in a hurry. Just under a half minute to go in this first half. Coming up, the T-Mobile halftime report. Ernie Kenny, Charles, and Reggie right here from U.S. Airways Center. Lopez is fouled. Combination of Powell and Fisher making contact. And it's on Fisher. Lakers over the limit again. And Lopez will shoot two. And he's a very good free throw shooter. You spoke about that in game two, Mark. What does he shoot? 80% from the foul line. So nice job that time by Steve Nash. He, he got the screen roll. They switched it with Gasol. He pulled the ball back out. Let Lopez post Fisher. And he gets to the line. That's great leadership by Nash on that possession. Lewis Amundsen coming on for these final seconds. Robin Lopez. The twin brother of the Nets, Brooke Lopez. And hits on both. Has that nice touch, as you mentioned. Seven-point Phoenix lead is their biggest lead of the game. Final seconds of the half. Bryant looking for a screen. Powell comes out. Bryant with a deep three-point attack. Powell is right there. And it's waved off at center court, but they'll look at it. Tom Washington, the official at center court, said no basket. But they will reveal it. Well, we're not looking now at a 60-plus point half that we've seen from the Lakers in the first two games. They had 65 in game two, 62 in game one the first half. Tonight, 47, much better defense. And, Barb, you got to give the credit to that zone. It really uh, befuddled the Lakers, and they did not get good ball moving or good shots. A look at the individual scoring. Phoenix ending the half on a 15-2 run. The last four and a half minutes, Kobe Bryant, the high man for the Lakers, with 19, Amari Stoudemire, who has made the turn, at least in this first half. 13 points along with seven rebounds 
Steve Nash with 11, Robin Lopez with 10. Let's go to Craig. Well, Steve, you've been talking the last few days. You've got to get defensive stops. You definitely came up with them in the second quarter. How were you guys able to do it? Well, I think, you know, as much as I uh, hate to say it, we relied on the zone. Um, but, you know, it doesn't matter. we got to mix it up. They're a great team. Um, and we got to match them. we got to play hard. we got to be intelligent. we got to match them. It seems like you're reading the defense so well also. Finding openings, great passes to Amari, cutting to the lane. How are you doing that? Thanks, buddy. Um, i just trying to be aggressive for my team. You know, my, i got a great group of guys. It's a pleasure to play with them. And we work well. Thanks. We'll be back with a T-Mobile halftime report from Phoenix, EJ, Kenny, Charles, and Reggie, live from outside U.S. Airways Center. We have to start the game with the same intensity that we did. I mean, the third quarter, the same intensity we started the game with. Okay, we got to get our intensity level way up. We got to get our execution level way up. And then when we go back down defensively, we got to make sure that we're moving and we're talking. Back in Phoenix, Arizona, Marv Albert, Doug Collins, Craig Sager, seven point Sun lead here in game three of this Western Conference Finals. We heard Alvin Gentry telling his team he's, he's happy that the defense has uh, picked up, the intensity has picked up, and uh, that certainly of the case for the Suns in the first half as they have gone to the zone frequently and it's made a difference. Well, just watch on this one possession, Marv. You see it starts out, Amari Stoudemire is guarding Kobe Bryant. As Kobe dribbles up, he passes him off to Steve Nash. Kobe gives the ball up to Fisher. He's going to cut through and Nash will take him through and then pass him off to Robin Lopez. Now you see Grand Hill sliding back into the zone. That's the third guy that has guarded Kobe. Here is Grand Hill is going to be number four. And he's playing him. And then as the ball moves, you're going to see Jason Richardson slide back down. They both trapping. The ball goes out of bounds. So five guys. So what happens is not one guy is given the assignment of having to try to slow down Kobe Bryant. He was in that first half terrific for 9 of 14. But the Suns, the defense in that second quarter was great. Lakers 48% overall. Phoenix 38% percent either club hitting the three and the 18 of 20 at the free throw line is the obvious difference Lakers to the line only three times but when you consider Phoenix shooting 38 percent at one stretch just two for 19 from the field over 10 minutes and yet they have the lead here's Bryant for three chased down by Hill Richardson yes what he loves to do he leaks out on the fast break and he's one of the best fast break players in the nba mark a lot of times he runs for that three-point line that time he got the little mid-range jumper and the sun said you know what the zone's working we're going to stay with it until they start knocking down some jump shots against us gasol al gasol who has had an outstanding postseason 14 points tonight seven of nine from the field Nash rebounded by Bynum. Bynum has three fouls. Odom, three fouls off the bench. Our test has been very quiet. Ryan led by Nash gives it to our test for three. Sort of amazing. The Lakers all year long have not been a good three-point shooting team. Marvin, it seems like against the Suns, finally, they have hit their stride. They didn't shoot well against Oklahoma City or against Utah, but they are knocking them down in the first two games against Phoenix. Contrast the Suns, the best. That will count on the foul. Stoudemire heads to the line, but the Suns led the NBA in three-point shooting, just five for 22 from three-point territory in game one, but they picked it up in game two. It's the aggressiveness that Alvin Gentry spoke to his team at halftime about coming up with that same intensity. Remember, Marv, in the first quarter, uh, Amari Stoudemire got to the free throw line, I think, seven times in the first quarter. You heard our studio guys talk about high activity. His body's alive. He's moving. The ball is moving. So he's getting more opportunities tonight uh, to go against an individual defense that he can attack. And that put foul number four on Bynum. He took a seat. Odom is back playing with the three foul. Test on the drive and the chip by Odom. 
the concerns for the Lakers are, you know, once you start attacking that zone, getting second shots, and here's uh, Richardson unloading that long three, but the longer you play a zone, Marv, normally teams start figuring it out. So let's see if the Lakers will start finding holes in that zone defense. Two minutes gone by here in the third. We're at U.S. Airways Center, Phoenix. Fisher fouled on a three-point attempt. Three free throws coming up off the foul committed by Grant Hill. Let's check it with Craig Sager. Craig. Well, Doug, you were talking about finding holes in that 2-3 zone while you were telestrating the effectiveness of the zone. Assistant coach Brian Shaw, who is in charge of the scouting report on Phoenix, was doing a similar thing. He showed five minutes of tape to the team. He said there are holes in here. There are seams. You're standing on the outside, taking outside shots, passing the ball around the perimeter. There are seams on the wings and also behind. Look for Gasol and Bynum, who's now out of the game with his foul trouble, but more like Odom, to find those seams. He told the guys, listen, that zone is not that effective. You're just not attacking the seams. You know, Doug, this coaching thing could work out very well for him. <laughs> well, you, you know, Marv, it's interesting. A lot of times when guys see zone, they think, you're going to shoot outside shots. And actually, the way you punish a zone is to throw the ball into the post and play inside out. Sometimes you start getting caught on the perimeter, and it becomes contagious. You start quick shooting the ball, and you forget about your strength being in the paint. Eric Fisher. Hitting all three free throws. The Lakers down by two. The Suns have their starting five on the floor. Nash. And on a switch by Odom. Lopez played by Bryant. Bryant going for the steal. Lopez took advantage. I like it though. They switched it once again, and uh, it was recognized by the Phoenix Suns. Kobe could not get around Lopez. He did a nice job sealing him. And when Kobe went for the steal, he protected the ball, and uh, Lopez did a nice job here tonight. He played so well. Once again, five of six, 12 points. Stoudemire with the steal and the save. Suns try to get back into this series. Avoid going down 3-0 to the Lakers. Richardson, yes, and it counts. Well, Jason Richardson has been terrific all through the playoff, playoff series for the Phoenix Suns. He has been their leading scorer. He's had many big ball games, especially on the road when they really need that kind of spark. He had a big game the other night, 27 points. First time he's had 20, 20 or more in the playoffs that they have lost this season. Normally when he scores, they win. Foul committed by Bryant, his second. Seven point lead again for the Sun. The Saul was able to get in front of Stoudemire and Kobe saw it developing, so Bryant with assist number eight. That's what I was talking about. Go into the post against the zone. Find those little open areas. And Kobe did a nice job that time with Gasol. Hill for three. Grant Hill able to carry that corner three. The Suns now lead by eight. Gasol had it slapped away. Fisher on the recovery and gets the roll. The Lakers are going to need Lamar Odom and Ron Artest to get engaged in this game. They're combined three of 14. They're such a big part of this team. They played so well at home. They need them here in the second half of this game. There's Lopez showing confidence. Wow. Oh, what a move by Robin Lopez. A little whirling dervish with the left hand there, Robin Lopez. You know, Doug, when Robin Lopez came out of Stanford, it was thought that Brook was the offensive guy, Robin more defensive geared, and uh, Robin Lopez has really picked up his game at the offensive end this season. Our chest, run our chest with a nice fadeaway. Suns now lead at 69, 63, a game that has gone at a frantic pace right from the start. Lopez able to recover. Richardson being hounded here by Artest. 
Shot clock down to four. Richardson to the left hand. Tip missed by Stoudemire. Fisher wide open for three. Garrett Fisher seeing a number of open shots. Five of eight from the field. 15 points for Fisher. And you can hear the Lakers support in this crowd here in Phoenix as Stoudemire comes right back. It's been an outstanding game for Amari Stoudemire. What's going on here? Well, Lopez and Fisher had words. Lopez said something to Fisher, and when he ran by him, he got his elbow up, and it looked like he might have grazed him in the head. I don't know what's going to be called here. But they sort of ran into each other. They stopped, they talked, and then as Lopez ran by him, he had his hands up in the air. I don't know if his elbow caught him. Now watch here as Fisher, they bump right here. Now he gets his hands up. Now watch when he runs past him. He hits him on top of the head. And that's when Fish comes running back. Watching her right on top of the head with his elbow. Double technicals called on Derek Fisher and Robin Lopez. It'll be Laker ball, trailing by five. What a performance at the offensive end here tonight by Derek Fisher. And Marby's a much better player on the road. All of a sudden, now those little cuts to the lane and starting to. Uh, Get some easy baskets again. You've got to attack a zone on the inside. Our test turning it here in the third quarter. Stoudemire got the step on Gasol. Strong move by Amari Stoudemire. Now Gasol's got to get on that right hand, and he's got to force Stoudemire to drive that ball to his left, where he has some help. Two or three times in this game, he's either been beaten that for a layup or he's had to foul. 20 points, eight rebounds for Stoudemire. Odom for three for the catch and shoot. Rebounded by Hill. Nash making the turn. Beautiful pass. Hill. He thought he was hit from behind. Bryant played by Hill. Hill tipped it away. Bryant thought he was fouled. Our test had by Stoudemire. Our test rejected and fouled by Lopez. I tell you, I love Lopez. He brings a toughness to this team. I know Charles Barkley loves it too. He always felt the Suns were very soft inside. Lopez has brought an edge, and that's what this team needs. No easy baskets are going to have to earn it at the line. Our test comes in. Here comes Lopez, and our test is going to have to shoot a couple free throws. Welcome back to Phoenix, Arizona, and it's time for the Double Down Cam presented by KFC Double Down. Well, you see how the Lakers are going to attack the zone defense on this particular possession. The key is there, look at Pau Gasol. He has uh, Amari Stoudemire screen. So when this ball is swung and Kobe penetrates, as Lopez has to step up, that frees Gasol to go right to the rim and have no one be able to protect. Watch now as Lopez steps up. Look at Gasol inside. Amari's got to fight to get back inside him. And then Kobe Bryant, beautiful pass. See how Gasol keeps that ball high. Nine assists tonight for Kobe, nine for Nash as well. But Kobe has four turnovers. Marv, how about tonight? The Lakers, 10 turnovers that have led to 11 Phoenix points. The Suns only three turnovers, three points. So they're plus eight points off turnovers tonight. That's a big number because uh, that number uh, really hurt the Suns on the road. They, I think 23 points off turnovers the other night for the Lakers. Ron Artest scoreless in the first half with eight points here in the third. The Phoenix lead is now three. Suns have won 12 of the last 13 games. Here at home, Lakers have won eight straight playoff games. Have not lost since April the 24th. Lopez, again with that running hook. 
I tell you, he's playing great. He really is giving them a chance here today. And Marv, you were right. His brother Brooke was the offensive man at Stanford. He basically was their defensive post player. He really didn't get that many opportunities. Seven of eight here tonight. It'll give him go. Did not work. Oh, Grant Hill that time. Nice job reacting, deflecting that pass. It's the end of this quarter going to be so important as Nash finally turns the ball over for the first time tonight. Fisher for three. Yes. <laughs> Derek Fisher again. 18 points for Fisher. 11 coming in this third quarter. So the Lakers are within two. Coming up on four minutes to play in the third. Stoudemire draws the foul. It's on Odom. That's number four. Let's show you somebody about Derek Fisher, Mark. Look at look at this home and road. The difference in Derek Fisher, what he's done. And I said, how many big shots has he hit in his career? Remember the point four in San Antonio in the Utah series, a big three in that game in game three. How about in the NBA Finals last year, a couple threes late in that ball game? The list goes on and on. And his shooting tonight is giving his team a chance to hang around and to keep the pressure on the Phoenix Suns. Stoudemire now seven of nine at the line. Let's uh, check in with Craig Sager. Craig. Well, after we talked about those uh, graphics in our production meeting this morning, I asked Derek Fisher about those stats, and he said, listen, young players tend to play well at home. As the veteran leader of this team, I know I have to play better on the road, and I take on a bigger role. He says it's not a coincidence. It's by design. And in the first two games, he was looking more at the defensive end, dealing with, with Steve Nash. The Lakers uh, wanted to put a stamp on what Fisher could do with Nash, although there was certainly uh, help involved. But as a result of the offensive end, Derek won a three, game one, two of eight, game two, and took a toll. Here's Shannon Brown who just checked back in, missing out of three. Nash able to hustle it down. Well, Phil Jackson looking for another shooter who can shoot the ball over the top of that zone. Shannon Brown has not shot it well tonight. Oh, Lopez rejected. Brown got a piece of it. And here is Brown dishing back the other way to Gasol. Gasol off the turn. Great hands, great footwork, soft touch. I think he's the best big man in the NBA. You want to talk about offensively the way he plays the game. Richardson stopped by Gasol. And a foul against the Suns. Adam Brown was pushed by Jason Richardson. Richardson with his second. Suns with their third team foul. 316 left. Third quarter in Phoenix. Suns try to get back into the series. Lakers try to go up 3-0. Doug, we've been talking about this throughout the series. Pau Gasol with those post moves, reminiscent of a fellow by the name of Kevin McHale, Hall of Famer, TNT, and NBA TV analyst. Now, Kevin with the up and under. You're going to see Gasol here with the same little up and under move, this time with the left hand. A little fading jump shot. Kevin with the soft touch. A little fading jump shot by Pau Gasol. The up and under by Kevin McHale off the dribble. The quick spin. The quick spin by Gasol with the left hand. And uh, as I said, I think he's the most skilled big man in the game today. I think a few years ago it was Tim Duncan, but at age 34, with all the wear and tear and all the minutes that Tim has played, I think this guy is the preeminent guy in the post now playing the game. Paul Gasol out of Barcelona, Spain at his ninth NBA season coming from Memphis in one of the great steals in the history of the NBA. Well, how quickly things changed a few years ago. 42 win Laker team. They come in here, get beat four out of five, get eliminated. Kobe wants to be traded. It looks like it's uh, in shambles for the Lakers. Fisher comes back. They keep buying them. They get Gasol. And all of a sudden, the rest is history. They are right back on top of the heap once again. Lakers with the ball within two. Fisher this time way off.
into this quarter, Marv, so important because Steve Nash, they like to rest him. Uh, they're going to be able to do it in a real close game, and the Suns bench did not play well in the first half. How much will Alvin trust them in a huge game? Stoudemire over Gasol. Amari Stoudemire, 24 points and nine rebounds. 11 of his 24 coming here in the third quarter. This back by Stoudemire. Kobe has not come up with a field goal in the third quarter. Doc clock down to three. Bryant has to force one up and hits from downtown. What, what did you say? We'll let it let out of the... Oh, uh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> he does have four assists in the quarter. Stoudemire draws the foul. What a beautiful pass from Nash. Mark, you love this right here. This is this is great leadership. So about guys who trust and believe in each other. Derek Fisher, Kobe Bryant, they've won four championships together. Phil Jackson is outside of the huddle, letting his team talk it over. What do they want to do to attack? Taking ownership of their team. This is a coach's dream right here. When you have guys communicating with one another and then going out on the floor, it takes so much responsibility off the coach to have to orchestrate every single possession. They have great ownership of their team. Stoudemire hits on both. So the Suns now lead at 81-78, just under two minutes to play in this third quarter. Channing Fry has checked back in. Shot clock down to four. Down to two for Saul. And Stoudemire upset. He felt that uh, Gasol was pushing out with his other hand. But the Lakers, though, they really go into a small lineup. Ron Artest really is playing with that four position now. So with Odom not playing well and Bynum not being able to play against his team, is playing so much zone. Phil Jackson's got Artest now as a power forward. It's Nash. He was turned around, able to recover. Richardson for three. Rebounded by Bryant. And both Odom and Bynum sitting out with four fouls apiece. Eric Dudley has come back on. And he's defending on Bryant. The <laughs> soul can't get to the follow. Lakers able to get back. Down to 45 seconds remaining on the third. Stoudemire from Nash. Stoudemire took a shot to the right side of his head. He heads back to the line. Now here's Leandro Barbosa coming on for Jason Richardson. Look at Kobe Bryant. You think he draws a crowd? That ball goes inside. Four guys around him, and Gasol does what you're supposed to do, flash right to the basket and just sort of hangs that ball out with the big hand and uh, gets a little soft touch as you're seeing uh, Amari is bleeding and uh, Steve Nash getting a rest so Alvin Gentry is trying to take this last 39 seconds plus the timeout that you get between the quarters trying to find a way to buy time for Steve Nash and Amari uh, has had problems with eye injuries last year played only 53 games this uh, after coming back from the surgically repaired knees Looks like he took a shot around the eye right there and the athletic trainer Aaron Nelson checking things out it's to be Derek Fisher the goggles came off it's been a physical game three Aaron Phoenix I mentioned Leandro Barbosa made his return and game two you recall at one point he fell into a photographer's camera right at the end of a diving attempt and needed five stitches uh, for a cut on the, the back of his head. Steve Nash took a shot earlier. We saw Robin Lopez get involved with Derek Fisher. Well, that free throw line, Mark, we talked about at halftime. It was 18-0 in terms of makes for the Phoenix Suns. It is now, as Amari misses the free throw, he's now 10 of 13. They've made 24, only five for the Lakers. You say, why the disparity? Well, when you're playing a zone, you don't foul nearly as much. So the 
Suns have been able to do a good job of keeping the Lakers off the free throw line. Stoudemire converts one of two. Phoenix up by two. Bryant, third quarter for Kobe Bryant. Hit that three a moment ago. Here's Bryant, and he draws the foul. It's on Barbosa. Phoenix with their fourth foul. But they say it is in the act, and Bryant will shoot a pair. A programming reminder, it's a new season and a new reason to get more leverage. The leverage to our season premiere event Sunday. June 20th at 9, 8 Central, only on TNT. Bryant to the line for the first time tonight. Still working on Amari Stoudemire. Kobe Bryant, game one, 13 of 23, 40 points in 35 minutes at that playoff career high, 21 points in the third quarter. And spent much time at the line. He was 11 of 12. Game two this past Wednesday night, 21 points. But the big number, playoff career high, 13 assists by Bryant. Well, he has a great feel for what his team needs. And he's not going to force any shots. The Suns are once again trying to close out this quarter. Got a good job of keeping the Lakers out of that painted area. Only 32 paint points for the Lakers after averaging 54 in the first two. Drogic is back. Fama returns for the Lakers. Two-second differential between the game clock and shot clock. Here's Stoudemire. Oh, oh, what a move. He was able to adjust and go glass. Suns by two. Final seconds of the third. Bryant. And a foul is called. So that will put the Lakers at the line. Well, the aggression of Amari Stoudemire tonight has been from the moment this game has started. It's a tough shot. He goes through two players, Kobe Bryant and Pal Gasol. 29 points, 10 rebounds tonight for Amari. He's been to the line 14 times. Foul on Barbosa. Phoenix over the limit. The Lakers within one, only three seconds remaining in the third. Remember now in game two, Marv, the Lakers were tied with the Phoenix Suns 90 all after the great third quarter. And then it was the Pal Gasol show in that fourth period. He had 14 points. Now let's see what the Suns can do. And a foul on the Lakers. They are over the limit. So with 1.5 left in this third quarter, the Suns to the line. That's a bad foul, to say the least. 1.5 and absolutely no place to go for Leandro Barbosa. You know, you love the aggression, but you got to make sure you got to be disciplined enough to not come up here, put your hands on the guy, and let him go to the line and make free throws. This is going to be 29 and 30 free throws for the Phoenix Suns tonight. And Barbosa, 88% at the line during the regular season. Not a guy who goes to the line frequently, but he's he shot it well. Back up by two. Gasol looks to fire one down. Has to go short range. And then Shannon Brown flings it. So that's the end of the third. The Suns 86, the Lakers 84. Game three of this Western Conference final series. You're watching it on TNT. 12 minutes to find out. Welcome back to Phoenix. It's time for the Verizon Wireless Coaches Corner. I'm here with Suns head coach Alvin Gentry. Close score at the end of three. How much do you go with your bench and how long do you stay with the zones? Well, we, the zone has been good for us. We're going to stay with it until they do something about it. You know, it's been our best way of defending them so far. What about the bench? How much time will you give them in the fourth quarter? Well, we'll see how it goes. If it goes well, we'll leave them in. If not, then we'll get the starters right back in there. All right, thanks a lot. Thank you, Mark. And that Phoenix bench not delivering to this point, they've shot a combined two of 16 from the field. Alvin Gentry, your one-time assistant with the Detroit Pistons, been a head coach for all or part of seven seasons with four different teams, the Heat, Clippers, Pistons, and now the Suns took over first as an interim head coach last season following the departure of 
of Terry Porter. Fourth quarter is underway. Dudley shoots for three. And Brown lets it carry out of bounds. The bench now 0 of 9 from that three-point line. Alvin Gentry actually has set up a set play that time. Little weak side action. He was going to try to run Channing Fry up to get a quick three. Channing went too quick before the, scene, the, the screen could actually be set. And the season very much on the line for the Phoenix Suns. The Lakers two wins away from the NBA Finals as Odom has tied the game. We're even at 86. Drogic, Barbosa, Dudley. Fry and Stoudemire on the floor. Stoudemire, the only starter out there. Here's Stoudemire. Wow. Out of first. And took another shot to the head. Amari Stoudemire's come up with a huge game. 31 and 10. And that was a quick move. Brown lost sight of it. Carried out of bounds. So what this zone has really done to is it's taken Kobe away from getting to his spot to be able to make shots. Look at this quick move. Wow, just a little rocker step there, the beautiful spin move off the glass. But you know, Kobe's not able to get into any kind of offensive rhythm against this zone. Stoudemire, Fabar with the rebound. Lost it. Dragic took the dribble away. Roland Dragic in the second season at Slovenia. Barbosa for three. Layoff. Fabar came up with it, and a foul is called. That's a lucky play right there for the Phoenix Suns because it was off to the races for the Los Angeles Lakers, so they should be glad that a foul was called on that play. And all this that's going on right now, Marv, what you're trying to do if you're Alvin Gentry is how much time can you buy for Steve Nash? So he's going to be fresh enough to try to be able to finish the game and make this a 2-1 series. Foul on Danny Fry. Fry defending on Bryant. That's a down low to Odom and a foul and Stoudemire making contact with Odom. Foul on Barbosa, that is his third. A quick uh, two team fouls charged to the Suns. First 30 plus point playoff game since back in April of 2008 for Amari Stoudemire. Here's Fabar with three. Gasol able to reach over Stoudemire for the rebound. Bryant. Kobe with a beautiful move. Wow. What a gorgeous move that was. The game is tied at 88. Rogic. And he is fouled. He was hacked by Shannon Brown. He's very aggressive, Drogic, Mark. We've talked about that before. And he's very crafty. Look at this move by Kobe. A little jab step. And then the floater in the lane touched nothing but the bottom of the net. And Drogic comes right back and earns... Two free throws. Warren Drogic, who had his career highlight game against the Spurs. That was game three of that uh, series. Exploded for 23 points. In one quarter, 23 of his 26. He hit five of five from three-point range. And that was a game that really pushed it in favor of the Suns. That put him in a 3-0 lead. He had 26 points, Marvin, 13 minutes. He had a basket right at the end of the third quarter. Saul met by Dudley with help from Stoudemire. Palmer saves that pass. Got clock going down. Odin is stopped. And it's a jump ball. It's going to be very interesting here to see the finish of this game. Mark, you said it so well a while ago. We're going to find out here in the next 9.30. Do we have a series? Or are the Lakers going to take the commanding 3-0 lead? No NBA team has come back from a 3-0 deficit. And that has occurred in three previous best of seven series. Only 14 teams have come back from 2-0. When you look at all professional sports, well, the Red Sox did it 2004. And the NHL, Maple Leafs of 1942. You remember that, Doug. And the Islanders in 75. Philadelphia Flyers did it uh, this season. 
I, I was cheering for that one. <laughs> I was in uh, Philadelphia oh, with my daughter one. and my daughters out for the Flyers, and uh, I thought you were they, referring to the Maple Leaf one. Well, both of them. I was, uh, <laughs> but uh, the Flyers—they were down 3-0 at the end of the first period in that game and came back to win 4-3. So, what an amazing win for the Flyers! And uh, apparently, they're checking how much time remaining on the shot clock when they call the, the tie-up. The clock running down to one second, but they put five on, on the clock. That's a break for the Lakers. If they can get this tip, they'll get a, a shot opportunity instead of a shot clock violation. You know, Marvin, the first two games, the Suns never led after the first quarter. Tonight, they've been leading most the entire way here. Let's see if they can hold on. Odom and Stoudemire going on this jump ball. Controlled by Farmar, and he stepped out. Farmar did a nice job that time. He stole the tip. You know, guys who didn't grow up with jump balls don't know how to read tips. You know what I mean by that is read the guy's eyes where he's going to tip the ball. And Farmer did a nice job. He just stepped out of bounds. And because they've taken away the jump ball at the start of the second half, you do not see yeah, that's any right. jumps. And these guys all play with alternating possession in college. Dragic has an unusual delivery. Kept alive, though. Phoenix in possession, up by one. Three minutes gone by here on the fourth. Barbosa not able to hit on the three-point attempt. Oh. Is fouled by Fry. Is Phil Jackson going to give Kobe any rest? be interesting is he going to play the entire second half normally Kobe rests at the end of the third quarter I think both teams realize the uh, magnitude of this game tonight Amari Stoudemire has been brilliant get his glasses knocked off but he's had 31 points and 10 rebounds can the Suns hold on and win this game welcome back to Phoenix where we have a one-point game NBA players care about the community. This season, seven-time All-Star Grant Hill joined the Society for Adolescent Health and Medicine to help students across the country take their best shot at health. Vaccines for Teens is a national campaign designed to educate teens and their parents about how young people can protect themselves through vaccination. The NBA, where caring happens. Mark. Thank you, Craig. We look across the way, Steve Nash checking back in along with Robin Lopez with 8.47 remaining in this fourth quarter. Normally, Alvin likes to bring him back right at the six-minute mark, so he's bringing him back about two minutes and 47 seconds earlier. We talked about Kobe has not been out in the entire second half, so I think Phil Jackson recognizes what's at stake here, as does Alvin Gentry. Uh, one of these teams either going to create a series, the Phoenix Suns make it 2-1, or the Lakers will go up big at 3-0. Last 8:47, and if Odom converts on this free throw, the Lakers will have the lead for the first time in this second half. Lamar Odom getting himself in foul trouble early. He's playing with four. Andrew Biden has been sitting after picking up his fourth. So the Lakers are up by a point. Nash played by Farmer. Dudley in the backcourt. Stoudemire with Lopez and Richardson on the front line. Nash to the crossover. Dudley passed on a three. Dudley off the drive. Jared Dudley, who came over from the Charlotte Bobcats in the deal involving Richardson, along with Boris Dio and Roger Bell, and has been a Key pickup for the Suns, particularly for his defensive players. He picks one off. Now, nice deflection that time, but the Suns have been very active in that zone. Marvel only 36 points in the paint for the Lakers. They've taken away a huge strength. And Robin Lopez 
Got a little rest. Those legs are fresh once again. How about Lopez? Eight of 10, 18 points. He has been terrific tonight. And the Lakers holding themselves with four turnovers here at the start of the fourth. Odom, all able to extend. Lamar Odom with a gorgeous move to bring the Lakers within a point. Well, he's coming to life after a very slow start, finally getting to the rim with that left hand. Stoudemire surrounded, draws the foul. Robin Lopez, for all the time, Mark, that, that he has missed, you, sp you talked about that a while ago, to be this kind of in rhythm. You know, normally you figure a guy rebounding and playing tough defense, but uh, Lamar Odom then comes right back with that uh, swooping left-handed drive that he's so known for. Rick Sager telling us earlier to hear that uh, Robin was running out of gas. He did sit for a while. He's, he's back in there. Let's take a look at the upcoming national television schedule. Tomorrow on ESPN starting 7.30 Eastern time, it's the Magic and the Celtics up in Boston in some conference finals game four. And uh, we'll be with you here Tuesday night from Phoenix. The Western Conference Finals continue with game number four. Suns with a 95-92 lead. Bryant lost sight of it, able to save, but it's picked off by Lopez. Richardson for three, yes! <laughs> Phil Jackson calls for time. Two run by the Suns. They're up by six. Back in Phoenix as Steve Nash checked back in. Phoenix with a 9-2 run to recapture the lead. Marv Albert along with Andre Iguodala's new best friend, <laughs> the New Hill head coach of the Philadelphia 76 and Joe Collins. I know you prepared your ad libs for the big press conference in Philly tomorrow. I'm excited to go back. Uh, we're going to fly back after the game tonight and tomorrow, and I'm looking forward to being back in the city. It's so good to me, Mark, in my career. And I know you carry around those Philadelphia 676 or highlights with you at, at all times. No question. You know, all, all my basketball cards, all those things, all the memorabilia. Turnovers have been the story here tonight as Odom is called for the offensive foul, and that's another Laker turnover. That's sixth in the quarter. The Suns without any in this quarter and only four in the game. Mark Boy talked about it. In L.A., the Suns turned the ball over and gave up 41 points off turnovers in the two games. Tonight, only six. That in the free throw line is the big difference. Red Hill has returned. Hill with the step. Hill forcing. Rebounded by Gasol. Meanwhile, Kobe Bryant remains on the floor. Fires for three. Rebounded by Hill. I wonder if Kobe's getting a little tired. He's played the entire second half, Marv. He really hasn't practiced. And he's really had to work hard against his zone since the start of the game. He has had any rhythm. Stoudemire, who has had rhythm right from the start. Now with 35 points, 10 rebounds. The Suns open up an eight-point lead. Now, if you'd have told me the Suns were four from 18 from three, I didn't think there was any way they would be up eight points. Just under six remaining in the fourth. Bryant met on a switch by Nash. Bryant rebounded by Lopez. What a performance by the second-year player, Robin Lopez. was broken up by Fisher. Our chest with room for three. Hill plays the rebound. When the Lakers start getting this many threes, they start getting themselves in trouble, Marv. That's 24 three-point attempts, seven for 24. 
Good at that zone defense. They've kept them on the perimeter tonight. Stoudemire going at Gasol. It is an offensive foul. Well, after we had just bragged about the Suns taking care of the basketball, back-to-back -back turnovers, and that's the way you will let a team get back in the game. Mark, still a ton of time, five minutes to go. Kobe Bryant, 28 points, 10 assists in his 38 minutes. Amari Stoudemire leading the way for the Suns. Suns plus 19 at the free throw line. They're 30 of 34. Lakers 11 of 14 at the line. Artest with the step and a foul. That'll put Artest at the free throw strike. We talk about how good, you know, some of the role players for the Lakers have been in the first two games. Tonight, Artest is 3 of 10. Odom, 4 of 12. Brown, 1 of 6. Pharma, 1 of 3. They're not getting the production from those guys tonight. They called it a non-shooting foul. Foul on Hill, his third. Here's Odom for three. Loose ball foul, and it's called on Phoenix. So the Suns are over the limit, and Bryant will go to the line. The foul committed by Nash. Let's watch Steve Nash at the bottom of the screen. They're going to say he hooked Kobe Bryant. Looked like Kobe got his arm over the top of him with a little swim move, so Kobe will go to the line and shoot two free throws. And can the Lakers finally get to the line and maybe get themselves back in the game here in the last 43, 433 mark by getting to that line and stopping the clock? Bryant five of five at the line. Kobe with the 21-point game Wednesday night actually put a stop to his uh, 30 points or more. He had it rolling for five straight games, and a foul is called. He's away from the ball for the Lakers, their 13th foul. They will not shoot. Fisher with number three. Remember now, Marv, you know, when the Suns were playing man-to-man -man in the first quarter, Kobe, seven of nine, had 15 points. So they've done a nice job. He does have 30, but he has not been able to find that easy rhythm he had to start the game. the tip but he was hit out of foul. Kind of the concerns are when Lopez goes down like that he's got that bulging disc in his back but he popped right back up. Watch the Lopez here as he goes to the rim pushed in the back by Kobe Bryant you're going to see him go down on the lower back. Grand Hill running over to help him up but uh, Lopez seems to be fine. Foul on Bryant 14 foul though on the Lakers and you can see Nash holding his wrist. The Lakers with just one field goal the last six and a half minutes. Finally, some Suns defense in this series after giving up 126 points a game and 58% shooting tonight. The Lakers shooting 49%. Here's Nash for three. Suns with a six-point lead. As Bryant makes his move, the basket will not count, but a foul called up high with Phoenix over the foul limit. It's on Lopez. That's number three. And Kobe will head back to the line. A programming reminder, there is a time to be a Southern gentleman and a time to be a cop. June 22nd, a new kind of detective arrives. Memphis beat series premiere Tuesday, June 22nd at 10, 9 central only. On TNT. See, Kobe's so smart. He understands now every time he puts that ball down on the floor and there's contact, it's going to be a great chance he's going to shoot free throws. So the challenge for the Phoenix Suns is going to be can you keep Kobe off the line here to finish this game? Both teams in the bonus. <laughs> 32 points for Kobe Bryant. It is now a four-point lead for the Suns. Stoudemire got the step. Stoudemire, there was no help 
help for Paul Gasol, and he was upset. You're right. He looked at Lamar Odom. He's supposed to step up there and take off that drive. That's, again, getting beat with that right hand. It's happened about four times tonight. 37 for Stoudemire. Odom is open. Missed on the three. Richardson on it. And Lopez draws the foul. That was... You'd say under normal circumstances, not, a, not the pass you want to throw for a big man on the run, but Lopez has good hands, and he's pushed by Odom, who was called for his fifth. Well, Lamar, on that drive, but Marv, you're right. What happened, Nash got caught up in the air, and at the last second, he found Lopez, and he got bailed out with the foul. And now we're told that's number six on Odom. So, Lamar Odom... Finishes up four of 14, only six points, six rebounds. Yeah, not nearly the impact. There's Steve Nash gets caught in the air, but Odom not nearly the impact tonight, nor has our test. It's hard if I go back. I did that Oklahoma City game, game three, the Lakers played in Oklahoma City. The Lakers took 31 three-point field goals in that game, and they got beat. Tonight, here they are at 26, seven for 26. And only 38 points in the paint. That's 16 below their average in the first two games. How about the calm of, of Robin Lopez at the line? Yeah, you would never see that calm if you just watched him, right? But he gets to the line, and he really gathers himself. And boy, to have your big guys shoot free throws, what a luxury. Suns with a 104. 96 lead. Our test for three as they continue to fire up three-pointers. And it has not worked for the Lakers. 7 of 27 from beyond that three-point line. And Bynum comes in. He's been sitting a long time. He has to be very stiff with that knee. Shot clock to five. Hill on a flip to Nash. Yes! Lakers call for time. Little pride coming out here, Marv. Steve Nash had not played that great in the first two games. Amari Stoudemire, we talked about the stars. How about Steve Nash tonight? He has 13 points, 13 assists. Amari Stoudemire, 37 and 11. Will it be enough tonight? But time for tonight's Marines teamwork play of the game. Well, Steve Nash, the little give and go that uh, Deadly pick and roll, first to Amari Stoudemire, then to Robin Lopez. Amari Stoudemire, who's been a man possessed here from the start of this game, 37 points, he's got to the line 16 times. And how about Steve Nash? Mar, we talked about at the 847 mark, Alvin Gentry put it back into the game. Lamar Odom makes two free throws to give the Lakers their first lead of the night. Since that point in time, a 17 to six run orchestrated by this man, Trying to get his team back in this series. 13 points, 13 assists for Nash. Only one turnover. Lots of playing time being locked here by Kobe Bryant. And comes up short, but a foul on the Suns. Combination of Bryant and Gasol, 21 of 32, 52 points. And Stoudemire and Nash have hit 17 of 30 combined for 50 and Amari Stoudemire who did not play well the first two games has erupted he's hit 12 of 20 13 of 16 at the line 37 points and 11 rebounds foul was called on Nash both teams over the limit so Gasol to the line for the first time you know, we talk so much about Jason Richardson being the barometer for the Phoenix Suns when he gets 20 or more how good they play. Well, how about Gasol and Kobe Bryant when they both score 20 in the same playoff game? They are undefeated tonight. Gasol has 21 and Kobe 32, so they could be going down to their first loss when those two guys get 20 or more together in the same playoff game. Well, they have not received the same type of performance by Lamar Odom, although Derek Fisher came up big with 18 points. <laughs> Strong move again by Stoudemire. 39 for Amari Stoudemire. See, he's just too tall for Ron Artest. That's where you miss the length of Lamar Odom at the end of the game. Pretty low by Bryant. 
Stoudemire's career playoff high, 42. He is 39 right here with just under two minutes to play, and the Suns up 108-99. Four here on Tuesday night. And right here on TNT, Stoudemire. Offensive foul. Still plenty of time left in this game. Amari Stoudemire, as he goes into the body of Pal Gasol, who kept his hand straight up, and they felt like that Amari Stoudemire initiated the contact on that play mark, but it's only a three possession game here. Three on. Stoudemire, Bryant looks for three. He's been off. Nash racing, try to save it. And it's deflected out last touch by Nash. Lakers have the new shot clock. A minute 34 to go in this fourth quarter. Our chest with the inbound. Our chest for three. Test from downtown. The lead is down to six. Now a two possession game. Lakers over the foul limit. Suns playing the clock. Stoudemire to the rim. That's a huge bucket. How about our man Steve Kerr, our former colleague from TNT, ring those hands. He never did that when he worked with you. No. Well, maybe he did, actually. Here's our test again. Hill with the rebound. A minute to play. Phoenix Suns looking to get back into this series after being blown out. Games one and two. Foul is called as the Stoudemire was jostled by our test. Well, in the NBA, stars win. And Amari Stoudemire has been the star of stars tonight. 41 points. Steve Nash orchestrating that devastating pick and roll, that two-man game that's the best in the NBA. And Amari Stoudemire, Marv, has answered the critics here today. They can hold on and win this game. He's taken a lot of heat. I live in Phoenix, and I've heard it the last three days. He's been the target of everybody. Well, it's understandable the way he played. He was not active the first two games. Three rebounds in, in game number one. And a major disappointment after playing so well following the trade deadline. Helping lead the Phoenix Suns to 54 wins. Opening round, they beat Portland in six. Second round, they sweep the Spurs. Here's Bryant. 111-104. The 40 seconds. Nash gets it across. Nash again using the clock. Richardson is open for three. Yes. 19 points for Jason Richardson. Suns by 10. Four free quarter for Richardson. Bryant and the chip by Gasol. And Nash took a shot. Once again, this time to the bridge of the nose. Now Derek Fisher got a nice little shot in there on Steve Nash to end this game. Steve trying to rearrange his nose. You see the black eye. So here is Steve Nash and Derek Fisher. I think he hit him with his head. It looks like he hit him with his head. He, he came around with his hand and fouled him, but I think uh, the top of his head hit him in the nose. It's a painful playoff for Steve Nash. Derek Fisher over to chat with the owner of the Suns, Robert Sauber, and explaining that it was an accident. <laughs> Apparently they, they came to terms. <laughs> <laughs> he said it was in front. <laughs> <laughs> and Bob says, all right, you're right. But Marv, look at 106 points for the Lakers. We talked about it the first two games. They averaged 126. 58% from the field in those two games. Tonight, 48. 8 of 30 from the three-point line. That was the difference in the free throw line for the Suns. 35 made free throws.
And Shannon Brown for three with 10 seconds to play. And the foul is called. That'll put the Suns at the line. Ten and a half seconds to go. Brown called on the foul, so Amari Stoudemire ties his career playoff high with a spectacular performance. 42 points, 11 rebounds. Steve Nash, 15 points, 15 assists, and how about just one turnover? And Robin Lopez with 20 points, which obviously is a career playoff high. He's in his first playoff series, 8 of 10 for Robin. Mark, we talk about, though, I, I didn't think there was any way the Suns could win a game shooting 5 for 20 against the Lakers because I thought the paint differential would be the difference. But tonight with that zone defense, only a four-point differential in the paint. Remember, in game one, it was 20. Fisher fires another three-pointer. Dudley is on it, and that will do it. The Phoenix Suns very much back into the series. They now trail two games to one. Game four here in Phoenix, Tuesday night and right here on TNT. The Lakers had won eight straight playoff games with their first loss since April the 24th. And the Suns have now won 13 of the last 14 here at home. Let's revisit the cold, of course, like cold hard facts. Some of the keys that you set up earlier. Well, Marv, at least it was a better first quarter for the Suns. They weren't down nine or 12, only three. In the three point line, it was the 32 attempts by the Lakers against the zone defense. The bench spark at home. Yes, the free throws and the steals. But you know what? Zone defense and the two stars, Amari Stoudemire, 42 points. Steve Nash, 17 and 15. They got it done tonight. And the star of the game, Amari Stoudemire. He's with Craig. Well, Amari, for the past four days, everybody's been saying the Suns are going to get back in this series. They need a huge game from Amari Stoudemire. What was the difference tonight in you tying your career playoff high with 42? Well, just been aggressive. You know, just really, just really going after it. You know, Lakers play well. You know, in the post, they got they got two big guys down there. And they play extremely well defensively. So. Tonight, we're going to come out with some aggression, just kind of get it going from everywhere. After just three rebounds in game one, a subpar performance in game two, you were highly criticized, not only for the statistics, but also for the desire. How much did that bother you? Yeah, my, I mean, my, my dedication to the game should never be questioned. I'm, I'm always giving 100%. That's why I work hard every summer. That's why I persevere through injuries. So I try to dedicate my my uh, my game to, you know, to the game of basketball. So, you know, with that being said, I came out tonight with a chip on our shoulder. It's a must win for us, and we got it. Lamar Odom had a good game in game one. You said he was lucky. Tonight he was just four for 14 with six personal fouls. What was the difference in how you guys defended him? Well, you know, he's he been playing well in this series so far, and, and we had to focus in a little bit more on him. He's doing a great job on the offensive board, so he wanted to try to box him out, create a little havoc out there for him, make, make him a little bit uncomfortable. He did a good job tonight. You did a great job. Terrific performance. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Thank you, Mark. All right, Craig, 29 of his 42 coming. In the second half, Amari Stoudemire, Steve Nash led the way. How about the Lakers attempting 32 three-pointers, which is uncharacteristic. Way, way too many. But again, it was uh, the impatience against the zone. The, the Suns did a nice job of really working and, and forcing the ball out of the uh, interior. But, Marv, at the end of the day, 18 fast-break points for the Phoenix Suns. 37 free throws made plus 21 those two stats that's the big difference and tonight they were the aggressors they had the energy and they were not going to lose all right thanks to our producer scott cockerell director lonnie dale associate director bert bondi and tom heights production assistants jeff paris sam polis our statistician paul evans a strong performance by the phoenix suns they defeat the los angeles lakers 118 109 and the laker lead in this best of seven western conference final is now two games to one we'll be with you again tuesday night from the valley of the sun right here on tnt starting eight o'clock eastern time so for doug collins craig sager and the rest of the crew i'm marv albert saying good night from phoenix arizona you've been watching the western conference finals exclusively on tnt a reminder coming in 2011 March Madness, the NCAA Men's Basketball Tournament on TNT-TBS and True TV. Doug, have a 
terrific press conference in Philadelphia tomorrow. Thank you, Marvelous. After a quick break, it's Inside the NBA with E.J. Kenny Charles and Reggie from right here in Phoenix.